and welcome to Quasi's Bell Tower with your host, Quasi. And today we're going to learn how to make a sewer entrance. So let's get to it. Okay, so let's get started on this project. So first of all, I have two half inch or about half inch thick uh, three by three squares of the foam insulation. And we are going to take these and cut them down to a quarter inch thickness. So let's do that and get that out of the way. Okay, now I got my two three by three squares and now I'm going to take one of them and I'm going to cut it down to about an inch and a quarter so it'll come out to about two and a half inches uh, for a circle. So I'll go ahead and I'll set that up and I will actually not really worry too much about the center of this. I'm just going to push it against the, the uh, wire a little bit, push down on this gently it's probably going to pop through, which it is. I'm going to turn this on. Let that wire straighten out a bit and go ahead and rip this through. Now just remember you want to keep a steady pace when you're doing your circles. So they come out good. And then once you get to the end, hit that off button. So I should have ended up with a circle just with the way I did it. A little over two and a quarter, but that's fine. That'll work just fine. Okay guys, so now we've got a circle here. I already cut a line through it. You just take your X-Acto knife and go from the center of the circle straight through it and do it just a couple of passes so you don't break this or rip it or damage it. And then we're just gonna open this up, slide the wire through. Try to recenter this the best we can. Try to get right back in that circle you had before. There we go. Then uh, turn this bad boy on, give it a second to reset, and then let it go. And there you go, here's your circle part there. This will be part of your drain that we made like that. That will go right in there like that. So now we'll go down to the next part. Okay, so on this next piece here, um, we are just going to take from the center. I have it drawn out, it's a half an inch from here to here, and then from here to here. You just basically find, you're basically finding the center of this circle. And then we're just going to take our razor blade from the center and just drag that line all the way to the end. Do that a few times, get your passing through, get it to break all the way through to the bottom of this. Make sure it's to the center, which it is. It looks like I kind of popped that a bit, but it'll be fine. Now I'm taking this circle here, when I cut this circle out and I'm making it bigger than that I originally had. Um, I had it at three and a quarter. I'm going to go a little less than an inch this time. Or you can do an inch. That's fine too. Or you can leave it at the three quarters. It's, it's all up to how you want to do it. So now I'm just going to try to get this nail. There we go. In the center. Which that isn't. And that's a little bit better. It's a little off a little bit, but it'll do the job. So we'll go ahead and do that circle now. Now, if I'm correct, we take this circle here, center that circle with that circle, and you'll have 
a bigger circle in here, but I wanted it like that so if you're looking at it from that side, you could see this here. I mean, you don't have to. You could have done it the same size as the circle out here, but I decided to do it that way. Okay, guys, now that I have that all done, we can go ahead and do our designs. Basically, I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, basically, you already have your little line here from here, so I'm just going to run that up here. I'll do another line going across there, and then one going this way, and one going that way. So they're basically like 45 degree angles. And then I'll go ahead and do the brickwork. Uh, basically, there's a line through here already, and here, and here, and here. Um, I might run it this way, this way, and this way, and then come up this way, and this way with it. And then go ahead and use your tinfoil ball on it to give it the texture it needs. And then after that, we can black bomb that, and maybe start painting it. But I think what we'll work on after I get this all done is we will work on how to make the fencing. Okay guys, I do want to show you something. I still got to do some more texture on this, but don't glue this. If you if you uh, go ahead and prime this or seal it in Mod Podge with black paint, um, do not glue these together. Keep them separate. They have to be to do the, ne the next part after we get the fencing done. But basically, um, so I, I wanted to let you guys know that, but basically I'll have that line here that's been cut and that line here lined up because they'll hide really good together. So basically it'll look like that. This will be more textured, of course, if that's what you want it to look like. You can design it any design you want, it's your call. But my other thing is I want to make sure that you guys put, you, when you put these lines here, that you extend them over the edge. Same thing with the inside here on all the lines that you put in here just to let you guys know okay so we'll go ahead and finish doing some texture on this and we'll paint these two pieces uh black or coat them in mod posh with the black paint but uh we will start working on the fencing now okay guys now we're going to work on the steel gate for the sewer entrance now what you're going to need is a barbecue skewer and you're going to cut four pieces at two inches length and then you're going to take a popsicle stick and you're going to just nip the round parts off so you should end up with four inches or just a little over four inches but you need to cut those to cut two pieces and cut them uh, both two inches and then what you're going to do is you're basically going to take your ruler have this at two inches like i said and you're going to go three eighths of an inch in and you're going to make sure this is centered as best you can and you're going to take your pen and put it at the three eighths mark or six sixteenths and put it there and kind of poke it into the wood to indicate where it is if it doesn't write for you my pen's dead so i have to do it that way so every three eighths or six sixteenths guys you will uh, move your pen over and indent or mark uh, where you're going to be drilling the bit. You can do that to both of them or you can just do that to one and then we'll take the stick and put this one on top of it if you want and we're going to drill through with it using a uh, miniature drill, hand drill. And we're basically going to drill the holes through it and then of course the barbecue skewers are a little bit thicker than this drill bit that i have on here and you're going to need a 1 8 drill bit so after you drill these holes you'll basically have to go back through with this and redo this all over again okay guys since i know probably most people don't have a dremel or a vise to tighten it down and sand it i'm just going to take some i'm just just going to show you i'm just going to take some sandpaper it's just 220 grit and i'm just going to sand this down a bit Try to even it and just try to sand it down a little bit. I'll do this on both of them. I'll try to make them about the same. If you want to use a little bit rougher sandpaper, go ahead. But I find for a lot of crafting projects, uh, 220 seems to be the best way to go. Now if you look, I've already, it's hard to tell. But I've already kind of thinned it down a little bit. So it won't take more that much more to thin this down a little bit more. Try to get these two pieces about the same. Ain't got to be perfect. We're basically going to be taking these and pushing this 
into the foam to make an indent and then we're gonna kinda uh, uh, take a exacto blade or the blade I was using and kind of uh, cut out some grooves. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better. So I think that'll be it. See, that didn't take long. Now we'll put it together and get the spacing right. Okay, now I have my barbecue skewers set and centered. They are right here on the two gates here. They are only a half an inch apart, and that's perfect a half an inches. So now we're just going to take it and overlay it on the back piece here, and we're going to see how well that looks and how that fits. Um, we might have to cut off some of this wood on this side. This is the part that was like three eighths from here to there, and then after after the end, when you get to the end of this part here, it's about a uh, quarter of an inch, I think, maybe a, a half an inch. It's almost about a half an inch. So you might have to cut off more on this side. So when you're putting those dowels in, you want to make sure that you have the two three eighths ends. Uh, you know, you have it all lined up so it doesn't oddly shape it. Um, so we're just going to set this down, and we're going to set this top piece on there, and see where the overlay or how if anything's sticking out. And it looks pretty good overall, but I'm going to cut some of this off. I'm going to cut down maybe, uh, maybe like two or three uh, sixteenths of an inch, and then on that, and then like some of these skewers, like the long ones on the ends, maybe cut them down just a little. I mean, you really don't have to. You could push them in because um, we're going to try to make this and this. It's all going to go together and it's going to be flush completely. So we're going to try that in just a second. So like I said before, I am going to trim this up just a little bit. Okay, now I'm just going to set this back in here and see how it looks. Try to center it the best I can. And uh, what I'll do is I'll push in on this once I know exactly how I want it to sit. Just push on it to get an indent. Probably will push into the foam a bit, but that's what you want anyways. And get a nice indent of it all. Now I probably won't even have to cut that at all, which is awesome. So that might actually come out pretty good. Now I'll take my top and I'll try to do the same thing. Try to center that the best I can. I see one piece I'm going to have to, I won't, I think I'm going to have to trim down this one a little bit more. We got that forced in there. That looks pretty good right now. Uh, and we'll center this now. And we'll start pushing this in. Trying to see if I want to look overlook it just a little bit. So I can see it better over centered. Okay, and then we're just gonna gently center that a little bit better. Gently just push that in. Don't push it too hard. You don't want to break it. You don't want to go through all this work and just have it all broken now. This part here we might actually have to cut some out but see now you got to end it 
indent of what it looks like. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my knife here and I'm just going to cut it down a bit. Just kind of trace those lines that got indented in there. Just cut it down a bit. Don't go all the way. Just a little bit. And then I'll try to I'll probably cut it, come at an angle or whatever, and try to pop that out. There you go. See, that popped right out quite nicely. So it's just like you're just trying to scoop up underneath it a little bit and pop that out. Now I just try to center that back on there to the way I had it. Push back down on that again. You know, that looks better to me anyways. Okay, so we're just going to just keep on pushing down on that now. It's not 100% flush yet. Um, we probably will be putting some weight on it to make it 100% flush. But now that we've pushed that in a little bit more, now you can kind of see where the poles are. Even though I just kind of screwed that up a little bit for myself. Push it in. Trying not to break it. Trying to get the end dents of where the poles are. Now I could cut down the poles some more if I feel like I need to, which is no big deal. And as you can see, they're kind of in there. But I think I got kind of how I want them now. So I can do the same thing here and just make some small little insert cuts. Okay, and then we will pop this back on. And now that will probably look a little bit better. And the best thing to do after you get this all the way you want it, and you know it's all flush on here once you push it all down, the best thing to do now is you get some tacky glue. And see, it's even stuck on here. Um, Put in some tacky glue all along, all along here. Just use some tacky glue. Or you can do it on this side here, whatever side you want. Push this down and then take a heavy object like a, book, a heavy book, like a dictionary or a piece or a board or something to hold all this down. And it actually will stay one, like that once it's all dry. And it should not come up back up at all. It should stay so right All I'm there. doing here is just putting some tacky glue on. Dabbing it on the pole, dabbing it on the whole circle part here, the drain part. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and spread this glue around if you want. I think that'll probably be good enough. I really think once I push it down and put some weight on it, it will hold just fine. I'm going to go ahead and push that down now. Yeah, it's not sticking right now, but once you put some weight on it, try to even it out the best you can. Uh, let's see, that's not going to hold too well. I have to get some more weight. But you just put enough weight on there. And it should do pretty good. I don't think this wood is heavy enough to hold that down the way I want, but it looks like it's working now. Okay, it is now the next day. The glue is all dried. Now, the only thing I would uh, suggest to do a little bit is here and here there's a gap. If you want to fill it in with something, go ahead. But I was also thinking if this is going to be a sewage drain uh, thing, you basically you might want to find a way in or way out through this. So you could always say, oh, the bricks 
a week and you're able to break it and pop it open or whatever. Um, or you could just leave it like that. As you can see, this one didn't really do it. And I think the only reason it did it is because I just put too much pressure on the material and it kind of pushed it out when I was pushing down on it. So that's kind of my mistake. Um, the only other thing I saw besides that was I had to go back through and do these lines a little bit deeper and then redo the stone texture on it. But that was no big, big deal. But overall, guys, it's all done. So all I got to do now is I'm going to coat it in the Mod Podge uh, with the black paint. And then I'll go ahead and paint this all up. And then we'll be done. So I'll be right back to show you the final product. So here are some nice close-ups of my sewer entrance tiles. Um, got them all painted up and sealed for you guys. Um, the one on the left is the one that we were doing in the video. Uh, I really like the rust that I put on there. Um, if I really wanted to, I could have put some flocking on there and put some vines on there and give it like a really, really overgrown look, which I think that would have looked really cool. But th there you guys go. Those are the new two entrance uh, sewer tiles. So I hope you guys like this video for the sewer entrance tiles. I'm hoping in the next video that I'm going to be making um, that it's just going to be on the sewer tiles. I'll do the intersection ones and I'll do the ones that go this way or that way. Um, I want to throw a couple other interesting things in the videos. So I hope you guys stick around to watch those. So like always guys, please subscribe, comment, and like always, ring that like button like a hunchback. Until next time.